18 minutes past seven. I'm looking at my, the monitors we can see here. I'm just seeing... Distracting. It's so oh, cute. If you could see so what we... Cute. Have a look. This is what we can see. Have a look. So sweet. We're talking look hedgehogs this morning. We are. Look at those um, gloves. There's a reason for that, obviously. Um, prickly little things, but cute. Look at the little hands. Usually, they're fast asleep, hibernating this year, but uh, hibernating for the winter. But because we've had quite a mild autumn, things have changed. Yes, hundreds of baby hoglets who were born too late, it turns out, to hibernate. And John is at a rescue centre in Gloucester to find out what's being done to help introduce us, John, to this little character. Oh. Morning, Charlie. This little character has been here at the Wild Hogs uh, Rescue Centre in Frampton on Seven in Gloucestershire for around three weeks. He's just waking up. He's getting a little bit sprightly, probably a little bit bored and fed up of me holding him. He now weighs about 220 grams. When he came in, he was much, much lighter than that. Uh, really only about 150 grams or something in that order. He really needs to fatten up before he's released back out into the wild. He needs to be 750, 800 grams, something like that. So really much, much larger than he is now. They're experiencing here a record year with the number of hedgehogs being brought in because, as you say, of that mild winter, it's creating quite an issue and it's something that they're working hard to deal with at this rescue centre and at other rescue centres right across the UK. There we Here go. he comes. So he's had a strimmer injury, this fella. Yes. It is an ancient species that's struggling to cope with modern life. But he's healing nicely. The hedgehog population has declined by around a quarter over the past decade, but evidence can be difficult to obtain. So the Wild Hogs Hedgehog Rescue Centre in Gloucestershire is building 15 of these hog boxes to gather information. So this is the feeding station, Emily. Let's take the lid off and you can talk us through what's inside. How does it work? So this is where the hedgehogs will come in. Yeah. Um, we've put in a tunnel to keep the cats out because they come through and obviously a lot of them are microchipped as well as pets. So they come through here. There's a microchip scanner here around this doorway and then they come into this area where we would have food for them. Um, we've got a camera here so we can pick up and see what they're doing and we've got a microphone to hear them. Yep. Sometimes it's quite useful to hear them if they're coughing, that can be a sign of illness. Underneath we've got weighing scales so we'll be able to keep track of their weight and all the electronics is kept well away from the hedgehogs nice and safe. Despite the overall population decline, they've seen almost double the number of hedgehogs here this year. The mild winter has meant hoglets have been born too late in the season and sometimes there have been second litters. The young will struggle to put on enough weight to carry them through hibernation and the winter. We've had a lot of hoglets in this year. Uh, last year we had 186 admissions throughout the entire year but this year we're, we're just, the next hedgehog that comes in will be our 310th admission so that's a huge increase on the year before. And when we've looked at data from last year, the ones that are coming in now are quite considerably smaller. It's just getting milder and wetter. They're not hibernating for so long. Um, so they're waking up, maturing earlier um, and actually breeding earlier. Um, everything slows down when they hibernate, even their growth. It's all a bit out of sync, isn't it? Yes, it is. Once they gain enough weight and can fend for themselves, they're microchipped and released. When the hog boxes come online in January, it will then give staff here a far clearer idea of how the hedgehogs are coping and what we can do to protect them. John Maguire, BBC News, Gloucestershire. So when the hedgehogs first are brought into the rescue centre, this is where they come, the intensive care unit, if you like. These numbers, by the way, 19 is the year, 2019, of course, 280. So that was the 280th hedgehog to have come in this year. We had two come in last night. Just looking down there at the number, it takes it up to 311 this year. And they only had around 180 or so, something like that, last year. We'll just take you through to another part of the centre here. We're going to introduce you to Emily once again. Now, this was our little friend that we were, we were uh, talking to just, or talking with just a second ago. Emily, he, as I say, is about 220. Yeah. And over here, 
little and large this yeah. lump how much is how much does this he weigh weighs 890 grams um so he's ready for release if the weather's uh, suitable for release he could go we talked in the piece, I said that it's an ancient species that's, that's struggling with the modern world. People watching this morning, what can they do? What can they do to, to, to help a population that's really been under threat? Yeah, the best thing people can do is uh, help get, make their gardens wild. So um, if they've got hedgehogs around, feed them. Cat food and water is excellent for hedgehogs. Um, and if they can connect their gardens to their neighbours, if it's safe to do so for the hedgehogs, that's brilliant because then they can wander from one garden to the next um, and make their way through. They travel almost a mile a night most nights, so mm. they need a big area to, to roam around in. And it's pretty obvious to see the difference in size, but they, they're really sensitive to sound, aren't they? Their eyesight's not very good, but their hearing, there's nothing wrong with their hearing. Um, we can see the difference between these two, but how do people know if a hedgehog's in trouble, is vulnerable, and should be brought to a rescue centre such as yours? So if they're out in the day, then we would say they're definitely um, vulnerable or possibly ill and would need to come in. And at the moment, if they're under 500 grams, we would, we would ask people to contact a rescue because they're too small to hibernate. We were comparing them to fruit earlier, weren't we, and saying that he weighs about the same as a as an apple, and this larger one here is I don't know something like a rock melon yeah, or something. So something in between much those bigger. two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, something in between would be um, where you're looking for the small one. Obviously, needs to be rescued. The larger one's fine. Yeah, yeah, all right. They are very cute, aren't they? But as we were saying, uh, they've had a pretty hard time over recent years, hedgehogs, and this year because it's such a mild winter, proving to be problematic. But uh, folks such as these, volunteers, charities, rescue organisations, RSPCA, etc., etc., are doing what they can to help. So, from little and large, back to you guys in the studio. It does look, John, like the beginning of a kind of a story, the pair of them just sitting there, like they're just about to go off and have an adventure somewhere. Very cute. Do you know, I envy, I envy hedgehogs being able to roll up inside themselves and just be that cosy. That's just a nice position. It's kind of calming, just looking isn't at it, it, isn't it? Could have hedgehog cam, couldn't we? We are talking.